Every one of us, at least once in our lives, has seen or flown a kite. But what is the mechanism like, and why does it fly? The kite's construction and aerodynamic laws will help us to understand these questions. For instance, the simple diamond-shaped kite. It has a framework of two perpendicularly joined planks. A piece of cloth or paper is fixed onto the frame. It also has a bridle with a line reeled into a winch, which is called the handrail. It helps to control the kite from the ground. The kite has a tail, which helps it to keep balance up in the air. The wind force must be opposite to the attraction to make the kite fly. Since the kite has a tail and is tied up to a bridle with a line, it is located at a slight angle towards the skyline. This way, the wind force pushes it not only forwards, but also upwards. The stronger the wind, the higher the kite flies. There are many types of kites, from simple flat constructions to complex box and stack shapes. There is even a parafoil kite. It has no framework, but it inflates up in the air, shaping into a special aerodynamic form which helps it to fly. By the way, in 2011, the biggest kite in the world was flown into the sky during the Bristol International Festival. It had a shape of a giant fish. Its wingspan was 55 meters, and it was about 40 meters in length. The total area of the kite was about 1,200 square meters. But where did the kite come from? First records about them can be found in the 2nd century BC in China. According to those documents, Commander Han Sin used a kite to measure a town wall's height during a siege. Kites were also used to serve some peaceful purposes. They brought fireworks to the sky during the feasts. They were also used for fishing. People tied up the hooks to the rope flying in the air. Besides that, peasants use kites as scarecrows. The kite reached Europe much later. On his return from China in 1295, Marco Polo, the famous Italian explorer, wrote a detailed report about kite construction and the way people flew them. Since the first half of the 18th century, kites have been used for scientific studies of the atmosphere and to measure the air temperature. In 1758, Benjamin Franklin proved the electric nature of lightning with a kite. He flew a kite into the sky during a storm with a metal key tied up in the handrail. The lightning burned down the kite, but it also reached the key by the wet rope and was flashing on it for some time. This is how the first lightning rod was invented. In 1891, Otto Lilienthal rose into the air on a specially constructed kite, which was later called a hand glider. Thanks to Lilienthal's flight, kites played the leading role in the creation of the first planes. Prior to the start of the construction, engineers tested them on hand gliders. Even the invention of the radio involved kites, they were used to put antennas at a great height into the sky. You should not underestimate the height of a kite's flight. In 1898, the world's record was set. A kite managed to reach the incredible height of 3,801 meters. Kites are popular all over the world because even a child can build it at home. Let's try and build our own kite. We will need a plastic bag, light thin sticks, fishing line, sticky tape, scissors, and super glue. First, there are two sticks. One is 60 and another is 35 centimeters. They are assembled perpendicularly and fixed by duct tape. At each end of the stick, we should wind the tape and make longitudinal sections no deeper than one centimeter and push the fishing line through them. Fix the stick's ends with the sticky tape so that the fish line won't get out of the section. Then, we take the plastic bag and divide it in half, placing the frame of sticks and fishing line on it. 
We mark up the edges of the frame on the bag, making a 1.5 centimeters gap and cutting the workpiece out. Using the glue, we attach the bag to the frame and the fishing rope, avoiding their separation. We take three pieces of the fishing line and tie them to the upper three angles of the kite and join them together with a good knot. We tie up the long fishing line to this knot. We will use that to hold the kite. All knots should be thoroughly coated with glue. And now we will make a tail. We cut the bag into strips about 10 centimeters wide and tie them up together. We will get a rope about 3 meters long. Joining the tail with the lower corner of the kite with some sticky tape and glue. And the final touch is left to be done. A kite can't go without war paint, can't it? Here are markers and our imagination should help us. Now our kite is ready and we can safely test it in its first flight. Here we have not only heard the story of one of the most ancient toys which influenced a whole list of important inventions, but we also learned to build our own kite at home. So here is the end of another Info Toy episode. Stay with us, and the next time we'll tell you a new story about a new toy which managed to change the world.